Hello and welcome to Hi everyone. Gloss Onion, Super Chat Catch-Up, episode 221, I believe. Uh, it was about a film that was pretty awesome. I'm going to be checking out the messages we got while it was happening. Didn't quite get to. So, go. Expect all kinds of things. Who knows? The first, the first is, are you not covering Avatar? Um, um uh, sort of. We I did I mean, on Metal Sforge. Yeah. Mollix yeah, so called that's, in. That's, I did even. That's right. Yeah. Complain. If you want to hear us talk about Avatar 2, The Way of Water, then go on over to Metal's Forge. We have an episode where we talk about it. It's really mm. fun. Yes. But I mean, I don't want to talk about it again, really. Um, Me neither. I'm, I'm good. I'm I, uh, some balls. <laughs> it's just not a film that uh, I find very exciting in any way. I actually kind of hate it. I don't, I don't, I'm just, I, yeah, it's just, I, but I guess it's, I'm more apathetic about it, which is kind of worse in a sense, because it means it's like, yeah, there's like no interest at all in talking about it. <clears throat> yeah, Imagine yeah. Imagine how powerful that series, or I guess that, um, that IP could be if it was really well written with great well, characters and stuff. How much I guess more staying power it would have. it doesn't matter, because this one's made, like, I think it's about to cross two billion. It's, uh, it or it's well on its way. It's the highest grossing film of the year, like, definitely um it's it's not even close i think uh which that's yeah that's better than i was expecting uh well i don't know i think um i wasn't i i wasn't sure if it was going to make more than two billion dollars but it looks like it will is it but... on track to make the most money of any movie uh i don't know if it's i don't know if it's on track to beat avatar one but i guess the interesting question is does it beat endgame which is about, I think, like 2.5 or 6 billion. So, who knows? It might be an endgame. And then it would be mm. Avatar and Avatar 2 would be number one and number two, respectively. Yeah, I have to see, I guess. I got, I got no predictions anymore. It's like, what about the third one? It's like, no idea. No clue. I don't have, I don't have projections for anything. I thought, I thought Black Panther was going to make more money than it did. <laughs> like, I really thought that one was going to make a billion for sure. And I find that interesting because now, you know, 2023, Ant-Man's up next. How much money is that one going to make? Will Guardians 3 make as much money as the other ones did? How's the Marvels going to do? Especially when Captain Marvel made like $1.2 billion. I highly I think they're headed for another disappointment with the Marvels. I think they are. I think, uh, I, I, if Black Panther made $800 million, I don't know, man. I wonder if, like, what's going to become, like, the new average, if there's, like, an average for Marvel movies, like, 700, 600 million. And someone might look at that and go, wow, but, like, that, but that's really good, though. It's like, yeah, not compared to how much they were making before. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. And that's what matters. If you consider too. what they're what capable of. Well, it's just companies want growth. They don't want, they don't want less money. They're, the expectation is you will make more money, not less. Uh, every, especially, I mean, if everything you put out yeah, is making 100 200 million less or 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 even more less i guess you could say than what it could be making yeah like, that's a big deal yeah it is a big deal that's a lot of money and budgets you know, <clears throat> those budgets are growing and those marketing costs are pretty high what is your projection for the marvels by the way oh well it's, it's for money it's funny. like a minute ago i said i i don't know if i want to make projections anymore but my yeah, yeah would be I ignored I that. To, it'd be like 500, 600 million. That'd be my mm. guess. Yeah. And, yeah um, I think that's where I'd put it. I think as uh, do you... as went with 650, I think. Oh, I think he went for that with. with I can't remember if he said that for Ant Man. Um, Ant Man 650 sounds like. I think I think the Kang thing is going to help that movie. It seems to. seems people are excited about that. Well, clearly, Modoc is going to be selling that movie, okay? Everyone's excited uh, to yeah, see him. Well, yeah, with his big old stretched face. Head. <laughs> the that head guy, yeah. People look. Yeah, so Dude, they look like stretched PNGs. I saw a viral tweet that was like, I fucking love that they are finally representing these characters the way they are in the comics, showing Modoc in the thing and then Modoc from the comics. And then I saw a more viral tweet, quote tweet that be like, what the fuck are you talking about? He doesn't look anything like the comics. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He looks goofy. No, like, big head. Then, uh, well, I guess maybe not goofy as the it just looks uncanny, which I wouldn't say about the illustrated versions of that character. Like it's a look, 
and it just do it don't look good. Like I don't know what to tell you. It's a stretch. Some things it's just, just don't like... translate well to. Mm -hmm. uh, I I wanna I wanna give. I think they could have made it better. I think that they just didn't have the time or the resources to do it. I, I would still classify it as something that's not going to translate well. Um, Modoc. Well, it's... it's a tough one, for sure. Um, but you probably need to go full CG, right? Not do the actor space and then stretch it as a PNG file. Like, <laughs> you know, like Galactus. I think he could be tough. Um, go like, I could, be tough, I yeah. could see Gunn pulling it off, funnily enough. I feel like he would fit into I a James Galactus... Gunn film. I think with Galactus, you have a lot of options, actually. I think that keeping the distinctive style still gives you so much room with the coloration and the... I would picture them making him darker, uh, darker purples instead of the Probably. almost pastel colors you can end up with some of these characters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. More of like a, maybe like a burgundy, crimson-y sort mm. of dark, like a blood almost, a, like a royal blood, almost vampiric, potentially. They uh, won't turn him into a like... fucking fart cloud this time around. Uh, I know that much. Make a comic, like, approaching comic what a mistake that was. Uh, well, that was in the era when they were still kind of embarrassed, right? To yeah. To be, like, that to exist. In the era of embarrassment. Because, like, Silver yeah, Surfer, they, they took yeah. straight from it, and they always will. Yeah. Silver Surfer's just cool. Like, same for Iron Man, pretty yeah. much. Uh, well, yeah, but I guess you think, like, X-Men, right? They didn't want to do the yellow, like... Yes. They, the, they were embarrassed by that, clearly. Whereas now, that will absolutely be yellow. There is no question that will be yellow in, in whatever film comes out for them, their costumes. But like, you know, the little wings on Namor's uh, feet, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was never going to be something that really, like, it's like, mm. <laughs> But people said it was cool on Twitter, though, Mola. Well, people say a lot of things are cool. Oh, and that's mm. nice for them. Um, well, so... So, I mean, in terms of, if, if we were talking about those projections, you think Guardians 3 is probably the one that will make the most money? Oh, uh, you know, I'm almost, like, uh, going back to what you were saying earlier, it's like, I don't want to do yeah. any projections anymore, because I just don't understand anything anymore, but my general yeah. assessment is trending down, of course. Uh, uh, yes, but I think that's the case, right? 2022 was one of the, like, in terms of domestic box office in the US, it wasn't great. Hmm. Um... Uh, uh, which I guess is interesting. Does that mean that, like, why would it be America specifically compared to? Because I mean, this year, like, there have been what three films that made over a billion dollars, which is probably less than several years prior. Actually, yeah, that probably is lower because it was just um, Avatar, uh, Top Gun, and Jurassic World, and that still made less money than the other two. Right. That was on a downward trend. Because, I mean, I f that movie feels like it came and went and nobody talked about it or cared. We've had a few of those this year, though. We're kind of forever, like, dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah. It uh, just disappeared. Meanwhile, you know, Top Gun Maverick wouldn't go away for a long time. very long legs. Um, oh. And it kind of looks like Avatar might, too, which is interesting. Because I think um, the notable thing is that there have been weekends where there was a 0% drop. Like, there was no drop at all in terms of viewership. That's amazing. Um, I just don't get which it. Which, compared to Marvel movies, it's, like, often, what, 50 60%? Like, <laughs> you know, from weekend to weekend. People go and show up on the opening weekend, and then you'll see if it's actually going to have, you know, long legs or not. And the answer, a lot of the time, has been no. And I imagine the reason why it's no is because what do people really have to say about these films? Um, there's nothing key I feel like I've seen more people talking about Puss in Boots than I've seen people talk about, like, you know, any of the Marvel movies this year in terms of after they've come out. Yeah. Then again, it might be because I focus, you know, like, I've got an amount that I'm focused on animation and, and paying attention to, like, that particular realm. But I, I guess I just find it interesting, this question of, like, how much film money, how much money a film makes versus how much its staying power it actually has. Um... Into the Spider-Verse did not make... Like, that made about $400 million, which is pretty good. But it's not as much as, like, the average Marvel movie. I think it made about as much money as, like, Shang-Chi or, or uh, Eternals. But nobody talks about those films. People still talk about Spider-Verse. People are hyped for the next one. Yeah, the shelf life of so many of these movies is just... They just disappear. Yeah. They're just... People talk about them for a couple weeks. And it goes away. Yeah. And you have to oh, remember what happened in them. It's not even that they, t it's like there's a few tweets about a handful of scenes that are like the ones that would people are receptive to. And then, yeah, that's it.
it's the same with the shows as well, right? As soon as they're done, nobody cares anymore. Well, yeah, I, I'm super curious about Ant-Man's box office and the Marvels, and then if they do what I expect, which is to go down uh, compared to others. Like, I guess Doctor Strange is going to be the biggest earner for this phase. Well, I guess uh, it well, already was. By a massive margin. If we discount Spider Man, yeah. Like, yeah, uh. Which seems like we have to because it's such an outlier. <clears throat> we made twice as much money as. Well, and it also doesn't make money for Marvel, right? Or at least. Uh, most of it goes to Sony. Yeah. Uh, so Marvel's biggest earner is still MOM. Doctor Strange. Yeah. Which still feels Doctor weird. Strange. Like, the, uh, the number yeah. one guy is Doctor Strange right now. Like, well. Is it really Doctor Strange? This was Aquaman. Stuff, you know? Hmm. Uh, Aquaman is way more baffling to me. I still maintain that it's because people thought that was a Marvel movie. <laughs> I just, I don't understand why Aquaman was the one that made, well, because it made like $400 million in China, I think, so that was a huge boon. Boon? No, wait, boons, it was, it helped. Is what I'm yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what a boon is. Good. Yeah. I, I was boon's mixing good. up if it was a bad thing, yeah. My family is gaslighting me into thinking I'm an idiot for thinking Knives Out is bad. Uh, I don't know what it is for the Knives Out movies, but they are battlegrounds for people's oh, intelligence. Yeah. No, the, the, I'm not even talking about whether or not. They take a lot of their, yeah, their, their personal reputation and their ability to, I guess, like, judge art is staked to that movie, yeah. They, people find it very easy to slip into just being like, you must be stupid then if you either like or dislike them. I don't know, just tell me what you liked about it. Because um, I rewatched the first Knives Out recently and it was fucking cringe. Both of them are terrible. This is the thing. They're not clever movies, stop saying they are. But it find, I guess it's equally baffling when someone's like, it makes you a stupid person to not understand them. And it's like, come on, you know I understand them. <laughs> like, I get it. I just... I, I kind of odd right it's kind of this one dimensional it's like i know what the film is trying to do i don't think it does it well like, yeah i i get it i understand it i just don't think it goes for what it's trying to do well i feel like that's so essential right it, it, in order to like levy criticism is to at least understand what the goals or were or like what the average reading of the film is you know in in terms of its positive reading I think a lot of people, when they sort of identify either through themselves or because they saw a tweet or whatever, well, when people identify what the point was, they feel this need to go with that for fear of seeming stupid or as if they don't get it, as if the idea trumps the execution. Because a lot of people just uh, can't divorce the two. The What's what happened with TLJ, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that was like the first and, battleground movie, really, yeah. of the modern sort of film. I, I mean, it, it's it's a watershed film in terms of how it changed the landscape of discussion. And that's never going to leave Ryan Johnson's reputation. Plus, I mean, he's just not good at writing stories at all, so he's going to continue to make really badly written films. But, but it's all going to get connected to TLJ. Make, we saw that with Glass Onion. I'm going to make a lot of money, though. Because... Knives Out was very successful, and Glass Onion appears to be as well. Yay. Um, now that Andor has approved, been approved by The Long, should we expect video slash coverage of the series finale, a.k.a. Rogue One? Rogue One? Oh. Huh. Did maybe maybe right? that's when... Did pronounced it bizarrely? Did you, did you write... Did... No, oh, they, they wrote yeah. it bizarrely. Um, but... oh, okay, just making sure. We could do that. That could be a good time for us to cover Rogue One once the season two is out for Andor. Yeah, yeah. and then just yeah, hop into Rogue One and see how it works. There you go. We finally have a reason to do Rogue One over there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can expect that, I suppose. That makes sense. Holy shnikes, is that genuine ER? It was. He, uh, he for some reason, saw Glass Onion. <laughs> and so I was like, do you want to talk about it? He was like, yeah, sure. Um... Yeah, because I, just, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone see Glass Onion, but if they do see it, then, uh, you know, make sure you drink plenty of water. Don't think too Stay hard hydrated. about it. Stay hydrated. That means more pee breaks during the film. Those are always welcome. Mm. Got my drunk rags plushie yesterday. Also, hi, rags. Hello. Uh, the, the, the plushie isn't necessarily drunk. Um, just, just to be clear, it is not marketed as such. 
uh, got the ability sure. to become so. Yeah. yeah. Quite a variable. Uh, Definitely. The Mary Sue said they'd watch anything by Ryan. Good for them. That's great. <laughs> Uh, you guys going to mention the definition of what a glass onion means? Because I think it's the dumbest thing I've heard. I mean, I don't know about that. I, I, I find the, Concept I guess, turn of phrase fine. The Concept idea of something is appears complex, but it's you can stare right through it once you understand it. That's fine. Like I said, the, the, uh, the thing people are defending the movie for, it could have been a good movie, like the concept, but it was terrible. And I just like, how long can you say you didn't understand it before you have to like make another argument? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good way of putting it. Uh, hey, Fab, love your content. You've inspired me when it comes to writing. I just wanted to support and say hi, Fringy. Oh, hey, howdy, thank you. Howdy, Efapping mother yuckers. Was looking forward to the coverage of this movie. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I had a lot of people asking me for the coverage of Glass Onion. They're like, please do it. Please, 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 please. And I have a feeling it's because not many people are going to be breaking down Glass Onion the way that we did it. Uh, not at all. Everyone else is just going to be just not really engaging with all the stuff that's actually in the movie. They're going to they're gonna have their goggles and their lenses on, and they're not, I mean... They're not I mean people aren't going to... A lot of people aren't even going to watch it. Uh, a lot of people really don't like Brian Johnson's work, as you can imagine at this point. But the people who do like it, you're going to be getting all those, they already exist, all those videos like Knives Out, or rather Glass Onion, uh, the masterpiece hidden beneath the surface, or the the film that reinvigorated an entire genre, that sort of shit. And just, yep. uh, the stream I never knew I needed. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it was, rather. My dad saw it on New Year's Eve and said it was really bad. I didn't expect it to be as bad as it was. Uh, I don't think I did either. I was, uh, I was... Really gonna be surprised if he fails it three times in a row with the next one. Uh, really? You mean, surpri what? Surprised if he screws up again? I never thought he could make it worse again than, than the first oh, one. like if he made a film that was worse than Glass... That'd be tough. It's possible. If he sets it in space, makes it about time travel. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Call it Interstellar like Knives Out or something. God. Uh, when it was over, my friends were saying it was great. I was sitting there with my arms crossed like, eh, I don't know, was it? Needed this EFAP bad. I mean, this is I guess that's our job at the end of the day. We're supposed to break things down in the most simplest terms as possible from everything that's presented in the movie and then try and see if it's making sense or not. While a lot of people just watch the film and just like, what the fuck even happened? I'm not even sure. And I guess all I have to say about that is I wish everyone was more honest of when it comes time that they see a movie and they just go, I don't really know what happened. And, and if that's well, your feeling, go ahead. Like, <laughs> can, that could be a... Well, yeah, we need to normalize. I didn't... I don't know. I, d I don't know. I don't know what yeah, I think I don't about. remember, or I just didn't... You know, I, I didn't watch that carefully. Yeah. Or just, you know, I did watch it carefully, and it perplexes me, and not in a good way, I think. And the, and not for the response to be, wow, you fucking idiot, you're not smart like me. I, I've, I've said I said to people, it took me a couple of watches to get everything straight, um, because... You have like the reformatting -for timelines like tw twice. It's fucking annoying. Not it doesn't you know preclude you from being a good movie. It's just this one was really badly done once you remember everything. I've seen like plenty of comments being like, "Oh yeah, it is bizarre." Like the Duke just doesn't seem to care at all that she's alive and well, walking around, even though her death has been announced. <laughs> he just wants to go straight to his Twitch channel or whatever. And I think the response to that probably would be, is like, yeah, well, that's all he cares about. It's like, no, he's a human being. He's gonna go, wait, what? Are you satisfied with that answer? He's you know? just selfish, okay. though. Yeah. I mean, the literal potential resurrection of a human being, um, that is actually unprecedented. Uh, that, uh... Oh, you think that'd take precedent, especially <coughs> if you were personally involved with this person and their potential demise? Well, I'd say the, the reasonable reaction is... Oh shit, they, they've they announced that you've died. What the fuck? Like, you're right here, so they must have made a mistake. Did you know about this? You, you don't go, ah, she is dead. Her twin sister is here to try and, uh, you know, get information on who actually did it. That's probably why Benoit Blanc is here. And it was Miles, because I remember him coming back from her house. That's probably where she died, and, and that, yeah. 
Now I can use that as leverage to push my chat. No. <laughs> Duke, I, downright, that's kind of a smart thing to think, all of that in that moment. And, like, Duke is presented as a very much an idiot character. If anything, wouldn't it, <clears throat> once you learn that, uh, it may, whatever. <laughs> it just falls apart. Why do I even fucking bother? Everyone's gonna... Uh, the moment you say that there's a huge-ass glaring plot issue with a film, everyone's just gonna say, But it's called Glass Onion. Oh, Glass it's Onion. Supposed be, it's supposed to be dumb. I'm like, okay, well, fuck me then, I guess. Hypothetically, in a Disney fanatical Star Wars universe, I'm axing you. Has Duma played video games for 30 years? He has. That's the story. That's what I've heard. That's the... Word on the street. Yeah. They say he's still playing video games to this day. Still going. Well, at least the movie has hot chicks in it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You get to Silver look at women. Uh, thoughts on the new Pokemon designs? Uh, specifically, uh, Killer Wattrel, Orthworm, Mabostif, and Rabscar. Do you want to? Do you want to collect these rags? And then once you've got them, we'll we'll give a look. See, I'll carry on. All right, sure thing. Um, why do people think being self-aware is good enough as an excuse to be bad? It feels as though people don't know what, uh, that being self-aware doesn't justify shit. Um, it's weird to me because, like, do they believe that Knives Out is now on the level of, like, the naked gun or something? Because, like, obviously not. <laughs> like, in terms of, uh, total delivery. So what is, what do they think? I don't think that's what they're actually saying. I think they think they've, they've gone as far as saying... The mystery made sense, it was just simpler than you wanted it to be, because you expected it to be complex, which is the point of the movie. When no, we keep trying to translate to them, it's like, no, 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 no. It's not that the thing is simple, it's that it makes no sense at all. And it's, it's not simple, it's actually incredibly convoluted. Yes, that's another thing, yeah. Also, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use the loo real quick, and then we'll get into the Pokemans or whatever. But I'll be okay. Ready. Did you all know that Ryan Johnson has a new mystery TV show coming in January called Pokeface? What? Uh, I think I'd heard about that, yeah. Is that... Is that he's, like, writing directing? Maybe he's... I don't know. He might just be executive... Well, just. He might be executive producer. I don't know. I've heard about it. But I don't know much about it. I don't have to watch that. Don't make me. I'm not watching it. You made me watch Glass Onion. Um, yeah. And I don't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, sure. Uh, basically, Glass Onion is so stupid it flew below Drinker's radar. He covered it. He's got a video on yeah, it. Yeah, you made a video on it. <clears throat> uh, if you haven't heard of it yet, I highly recommend Columbo, an old detective show based on a concept that we, the audience, already know it and how it. Uh, sorry, we already know who done it and how, and we watch as Columbo solves the crime. Um, yeah, this uh, this is why it feels weird that this one. And even the first one are considered, like, super subversive. I feel like what he does to subvert is relatively simple. The actual, like, thing yeah. itself. It's the execution that's going to be praiseworthy or not, and it's not both times. Mm -hmm. One thing I kept wondering at the end of the movie, where's the gun? They said there's no proof, but the gun would be proof. Yeah, and it's just laying there out by the, the shattered <clears throat> um, window. Remember, the shell casings from the previous discharges would be round. Yeah, the, you you may have lucked out with Miles that he has handled it a couple of times. Uh, he did have a glove when he fired it, but he might not have when he was picking it up. You know, it's worth he's trying. smart enough to wear a glove, you see. When he fired it. But he handled it a bunch without a glove earlier. He may not have had time to clean, you know. And then, that's something that's better for, like, every other character can claim they saw him with the gun. You know, that would actually do something for the, the court case if they were going to try and lie. But you're right, yeah, they, they just gave up on the gun. And it's funny because he, in the scene, he drops the gun to the floor where he shot it from, so it's really easy to get that gun. I mean, the bullet holes in the glass and everything, yeah, you'd be able to... I mean, it's all... It's all well, to be fair, Benoit Blanc's not, like, a detective or anything. It's not like he would uh, know to do it's that. True. So glad to see you guys recapping this. It was super disappointing to see lots of people, including Drinker, getting events wrong. Set that record straight, long man. Um, unfortunately, I can't, I guess, get an idea of what you're talking about in terms of think getting things wrong. Um, but, I mean, I've seen Drinker's video. I don't remember anything sticking out to me in terms of him getting 
anything specifically big wrong, but let me know if you want to. I'm curious. Got my rags plushie today. He's hanging out under my monitor, looking just as annoyed at Glass Onion as the real rags. I am. I. I. I'm not annoyed at Glass Onion. I hate that movie, and I hate what it is doing to film discourse. I really kind of despise it, its effects. Because you didn't uh, understand it, or? Oh, definitely. I just had no clue. Yeah, I don't even know what anything is. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I don't understand art. And what a shame. If only I understood art, I would have been able to appreciate its genius. Um, however, I got this Pokemon. So I'll, I'll post the first. Okay. Kilowattril. Take a look so here. It's electric. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, pretty okay. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. He's an electric bird. So this is the next one. Uh, Wait, what was this uh, one? Sorry. This is Orthworm. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's not great. Not really a fan of Orthworm. <laughs> don't, don't really care for Orthworm. I don't know. I don't know. There's something about him that I kind of like. It's his smile. He just looks sort yeah, of happy. It is. It yeah. is the smile. Uh, next up, we have. Mabostiff. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> look at him. I like him. You okay? He doesn't look okay. Here, let I me get a um. Right. Let me get a picture here. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, I guess it's not an official one. Let me let me grab the. Stick with a the theme here. There we go. So I'm like, okay, all right. I don't think he the design's kind of bad. Like he doesn't look very. Pretty. I don't know how Pokemon-y he looks. It's yeah. Well, he's just a know, dog. Kind <laughs> like... of. Uh, and the next one we've got here is uh, Rabska. So let me let me find a good picture of this one. This is an odd one. This is an odd one. What I'll do is I'll paste this. Okay. Uh, Seems to be like a like a psychic dung beetle looking thing. I guess, yeah. Okay. Uh, don't like it at all. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Not a I fan. Think my favorite one is actually the worm. Yeah. So I, I like the doggo gotta... the best. I think I want to cheer him up. I, we gotta... I do like the dog. To be fair, yeah. For me, we got we got a so so one meh. Okay and dislike. So I do dislike that last one. That last one I definitely don't. Not a fan. Not mm. a fan. Not a good average, I don't think. I think the best you could get if you average them up is fine. Um hi Rags. Hello. I know what Galador is, but it came out right after Bionicle in two thousand two. Lego was already near broke since uh, end of 90s, that wasn't only on Galador. I think it was certainly at a... If LEGO didn't get a big hit with Bionicle, they could have been in some serious trouble. Uh, I think they had tried to sort of reinvent themselves in that era when it came to their regular LEGO brand. Um, I guess they felt like the old-style LEGOs just weren't quite selling, or they weren't doing a good job at marketing them or getting good designers for things. Uh, whatever the case may be. So Galador was a huge investment for them. They had a whole TV show lined up that I think Disney even sort of partnered with. They had the action figures. They had the McDonald's promotions. They even had like a video game uh, thing that would link up to the show and unlock stuff. But I think some bad marketing and a lot of cringy material that just didn't seem appealing was ultimately the doom of what Galador became, and Bionicle just took off. As far as I know, it's still going to this day. Oh, all right. If only this puzzle box would have been summoning some Cenobites, would have been a much better film. Yeah, don't always get that, though. I've heard the new Hellraiser is, like, one of the best of the set. Really? I find really interesting, I yeah. I don't know anything about the Hellraiser stuff, really. So Those likewise. are some crazy movies. I don't even know what you guys would say if you saw them. I don't know if we'll ever randomly force you to watch them. I don't know, maybe. Um, who knows? Who knows? 
Wings quote of the day. Sigh. All right. If we don't get any more donations in the next 10 minutes, I'm cutting the stream. Uh. <laughs> Hold the gun to my uh. head. Don't make me pull the trigger. He's still going, isn't he? Like, just got to, so... I guess he's... Him and DSP are probably similar in that regard, right? They could never... I was going to say him and Boogie. Never. But yeah, well, well, those two, yeah. That's I feel like DSP part. almost has... I don't I don't know. DSP doesn't have a good reputation, but I feel like it's just markedly better than him, right? Like, everyone clowns on DSP, but I feel like they do it I in a different DSP way DSP that they do really for a, Wings. DSP never had a fall from grace, right? Like, which is kind that's of true. what Wings... Because Wings had, like, a positive reputation. For and Boogie did. And Boogie definitely had one that's, like, plummeted. Yeah. Um, DSP was just always cringe. Yeah, whereas D yeah, exactly. DSP was always kind of a meme. I, I guess it's more so in the sense that they'll probably just keep doing it because for as much. Well, I guess I don't know if DS does DSP completely. I don't know. I'm not as uh, I'm not as up to date on the DSP law as I am. <laughs> um, like I uh, I imagine it's just you know. For as much as you may complain about, oh, I gotta play Call of Duty, it's like, you'd still rather be playing Call of Duty than, like, work at a regular, like, 9 yeah. to 5. You know, for as much he as you complain do that. about it, you'd still He couldn't get himself to, yeah. He, he would just, just be, he'd be homeless. He just wouldn't well, do any work or anything. It's just, I, I don't know, like, yeah, like, as much as you complain about Call of Duty, I think a lot of people would take playing a game they don't really like that much, but occasionally have fun with, over... Like a, a really soul crushing kind of job, you know? Absolutely. Especially because it seems almost like the default attitude that if you are a streamer or a YouTuber, that's the apex job. And anything that isn't that is just intrinsically especially, a step down. Especially if it's what you've been doing for like a decade. Um, yeah. This, this concept know. of like a, being a failure or something. Which, obviously, you can define the parameters for success or failure in your own life. So, you know. Indeed you can. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I don't know if Wings hasn't had that kind of, like, moment of <laughs> sitting down and really thinking about those things. I don't know. He hasn't. He has. He doesn't think. He doesn't strike me as a thinker or an introspector. That sounds like a ghost that haunts, like, your thoughts. An introspector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, I, that could be a Pokemon. Make it happen. That's a, introspector, that's and he's got a little like glasses and maybe a book. Yeah. Oh yeah, he he has a therapist couch attached to him at all times. He's just like, <laughs> and how does that make you feel? The ghost like, of yeah, weird. like a therapist died. Because yeah. because Pokemon, like you know those bios people send us, and these um they yeah. they say check out the descriptions of Pokemon in these super chats and. So it, it's not really off the mark very far that you have a Pokemon that's just based off of like, oh, it's the soul of a dead therapist if they don't eat enough children in the forest late at night or something like that. And they're like, yeah, that slots in pretty well with Pokemon from what I understand. This movie would have started off way better if Miles would have been sent the Lament configuration. That is Hellraiser again. And yeah, I agree. Unfortunately, no Cenobites turn up. Nobody gets tortured to death. You know how it goes. Is the lament configuration what you use to solve the uh what is it the hate the the hate equation or what is it from the edgy boy Snyder stuff the, the life equation right the life well, anti life equation, equation. anti life equation you use the lament Ugh. configuration to solve the anti life equation <laughs> how slash why life equation does you Andy's found it. how do how the how why does Andy's sister get a box. We did uh, uh, have a back and forth about that for a while, whether or not it's a good decision for Miles to send Andy a box. I um, think it's it's acceptable either way, but I would err on the side of sending her a box because you have far. I think you have just virtually free. nothing to use. Um, I think I'm still on the fence, <laughs> like like fifty fifty exactly, which is rare for me. Yeah, yeah, it's it 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 works either way. I think. I, it's, I'm it trying to think of that movie's problems. Yeah, that's the thing. The, the only reason it gets so much time is because of the fact that I'm trying to get an answer. I want an answer. I'm thinking about it like, if I'm Miles, I just did that to her in the court case, but I always invite her to these things. 
I mean, do I add on as well? We can add the layer if he's actually killed her on a little bit later, but like as it stands, like would you would you be inviting her anymore? Um, I mean they all and they all backstabbed her. That's like what they all know that they did. Um, I could this is the thing, like not inviting her just would seem like a normal thing to have happen at that point in terms of friends, but simultaneously he might be like, hey, bygones be bygones, I don't know. I don't think that's one of those things you can really run that with if he took everything from her. But then if he killed her, does it look less or more suspicious to send a box? I think so. I still don't know. It probably just depends on yeah, literally just a matter of who is looking at it, who the judge might be potentially. Uh, it's supposed to be that he's so desperate for a good mystery that he's being fooled by the obvious, but he solves the murder mystery dinner later. Um. Also, is that does he consider that a good mystery? I think he does, right? He says like it's a, it was a fun one to solve. The uh, the fake one, you know, the one with the arrow and stuff. Even though his fucking clues for that one was so tenuous. Yeah, that one sucks. Sussy among us, indeed. <gasps> As someone born and raised in Texas, I take offense to Fringy calling Batista's character Texas Guy. Did I call him Texas Guy? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just kept calling him like right winger Texas for short. <laughs> Did, I don't even know. Did he, was he from Texas? I don't know. Is that where he was based or something? I don't remember calling him Texas Guy. Uh, here's some schmeckles for my resident Shadow Man ER. Oh, I called him Texas guy because he shot the guns in the air, remember? The Texas yeah, that's guy from Texans Simpsons. Do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Freeman's yeah, referencing specifically the Simpsons the character. character. Yeah. yeah. Not just oh. nebulous people <laughs> from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Devil Fruit of the Week is the Wash Wash Fruit. You have to sacrifice, if you agree to this, you sacrifice the ability to swim, okay? This allows the user to wash and hang out to dry people and objects as if they were clothes. Would you eat this fruit? No. I don't even know what that means. Uh, wait, but I can do... I can do... Assuming that I don't want to do that to people, I can just do that... Do, is that like telekinetic that I can do it? Is that what that means? I can wash... I to wash and hang out people to dry, which is a very rather mundane thing that, as I said... Well, as you were I saying, yeah, anyway. you, you can already do that. That's true. As long yeah. as I don't want to do it to people, which I don't. Well, the fact that it's considered a power, I guess that just means that you, you can do it with ease or something. Really well. I mean, yeah. I don't know, yeah. You know what? I would rather be able to swim. <laughs> I feel <laughs> I like even know. though I, yeah, virtually never, ever swim, I would still want to keep my ability to swim. Because hmm. I don't yeah. feel like I gain anything whatsoever from this one. I can just put yeah. stuff out to dry after washing it regularly, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'd love to stay and watch, but I'll watch the re-upload. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I got Susan Wojcicki to compose this super chat. Wow. Incredible. You guys don't understand it. Miles is an idiot, which justifies all the plot contrivances. The twin reveal was just like Prestige. They're both about the same quality. <laughs> they put sarcasm in brackets after that one. <laughs> just in case. But seriously, why is it on the roof? Uh, if you're talking about Miles' car, because he takes the car wherever he goes. Plan to drive it around the islands, just going to keep it there, I guess. Probably gets airlifted or something, I don't it... know. Why, why wouldn't he just keep it on the mainland? He loves his car, Rex. Can't be without it. That's why when it crashes down, it's like, ha-ha, the rich fucker in his little car, look at it go, it's getting destroyed, ha-ha. This says, I love you, ER. Aww. That's interesting. Have you heard about Jeremy Renner's accident? He was caught under a plow. Hope he makes a full recovery. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I hope he does too. That sounds like a really fucking scary ass thing yeah, to be like caught a, under big yeah, machinery yeah. like that. Jeez. Yeah. Legitimately like terrifying. A really, really serious injury. So yeah, hopefully he can recover from that. It was just good to hear that he was alive. Uh, yeah. As for full recovery, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that would probably be. Pretty lucky at this point, but oh, absolutely hope for it. It just it seems really, yeah, like a really grievous injury. No phone, just like She Hulk. Also, fax machines use phone lines. Well, 
I don't know if, if that's a counter to anything in particular, like, for example, him saying it's analog, like we pointed out, she's like, uh -huh. yeah, he's so stupid. See, that's the Maybe. kind of stupid, though, that I wonder about. Like, is it possible for someone to be that... Is, is it stupid at that point? Because stupid people... Oh, yeah, I imagine somebody would the go up and say, so the definition of analog versus digital is this, like, categorically. Like, do you understand? <laughs> it, it, it would just what be as simple as say. some tech guy would know, and then he'd be like, I love fax machines because they're analog, and they'd be like, that's not what analog is. And then Miles would be like, oh, fuck, what is analog? Like that. Yeah. Does he mean like wired and not wireless? Is well, but I don't. I have no idea what Miles thinks analog means. Obviously, the point is, haha, he's gotten it wrong. But like, it's, sometimes I wonder about this shit. It's like, how did that happen? How did he install these fax machines? Consistently justified as he loves analog technology, and nobody ever told him. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, like, I, is it supposed to be that, like, rich people live in a world of delusion? Yeah, nobody's willing to tell them that they're wrong about anything, because they want to keep benefiting from them, that's what it is, there you go, it's genius. Hey, hi! Famously, not having access to information is a thing. Yep. Hi, Evap, I'm studying an electrician course, and a website we use is called Swindon Massive and Sparky Ninja, just thought that was funny. Swindon Massive? Sound like math. That's a town in the Britain. Any chances for the Banshees of Inisherin breakdown in the future, or at least a discussion about it? It purified my soul after watching this crap. Um, I thought it was fine. Uh, I've not got any passion to break it down, really. I would say that I was actually quite disappointed at the end of it, um, and I have no passion for it myself whatsoever. I thought that. The premise could have been far more interestingly done than it actually was. Uh, there were a few high points, but uh, it really didn't do much for me at all. I will say, even Seven Psychopaths and In Bruges, if they came out like yesterday and we watched them, I don't know that I'd be doing an EFAP breakdown of movies like that. Yeah, because I like both of those quite a bit, but this one just didn't do it for me like those two did at all. Um, oh, I'm I'm trying to say I don't even know what kind of coverage I'd give the ones I really liked of those uh, of McDonough's work. I don't know if it would get an EFAP breakdown uh, as opposed to maybe a video someday or, you know what, just a recommendation. It's been different for everything, you know? Yeah, sometimes all we can do is just wholeheartedly recommend people go see some movies and that'll kind of be all you might get. A reference here and there, but really just a recommendation for which we'd certainly give to Imbruge and Seven Psychopaths. Wouldn't the Greek government had to have known about Clear for the House? Also, how did he get it into Greece when it's explosive? Did airport security just go, yeah, don't worry, it doesn't matter what it is. Makes no sense. So, question number one, like, transport of this material that is uh, a fuel? Like, can you get away with just saying it's a rock? Leave me alone, or something? I don't I know. if they don't know to look for it, but you'd have to transport probably a decent amount of it. In order Assume to power so. a ma an entire island like that? I don't know, they never how made it clear. transport it? How much is required to... I don't think the implication, right, was that he powered everything on that, like, tiny amount or anything, right? But I don't know. And then secondly, yeah, if you're powering the house on it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be hyper-illegal if you don't disclose that, like, to the government uh, in the form of whatever power you're using. Uh, I don't know, unless... Do you get, like, some kind of weird rules with an island that you own that you can do whatever you want for power if it's provided by yourself? Not actually clear on how that works. Certainly not familiar with Greek policy on all of that. But the the thing that's strange about it is that we were told once it gets put into like a gaseous form in, in house pipes, it's so thin and small the particles that they go th they leak out. Like inevitably. And so that just toxifies all of the air. If that's true, this is what I get. I mean about the whole stupid thing. It's like, oh, did Miles know about that? Because that's just, he's just like, yeah, just do it anyway. I don't mind if I die. And then, of course, it's flammable. So if it leaks out everywhere and then there's a fucking flame, then everyone just dies. And of course, yeah, if he was caught with it and they actually did any kind of experimentation, they'd find out it's not only explosive, but incredibly, like, Toxic to be around as a human. There's so much about Cleo that's frustrating. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, I thought there was no way Miles was the killer until the end. It's obvious, but it didn't make sense. I thought it was a bad red herring. Um... Yeah, well, the, the more you try and put everything together in any way that does make sense, the more confusing it gets, I guess. When he's like, Who tried to kill me? And then he's like, Nobody tried to kill you. You made it all up. I, I, I think at that point, my first turn around, I was just like, Just tell me what, what the fuck you're telling me happened, because I don't even know anymore. Another patented Ryan moment. You get a lot of them. Ronald Knox. Twins and doubles should never appear unless the audience has been prepared for them. Ruin Johnson. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Yeah, I think... It does seem kind of lame to just say, oh, actually, it was a twin all along. I'm like, oh. It's why, um... It's why the prestige is, is like, one that really straddles the works. line, because he's in front of you in the whole movie. It's, um... His ingenue, the guy who takes care of setting up his uh, appearances and building a lot of his m magic tricks, right? We see that with Cutter, who's uh, Michael Caine, or Angier being Hugh Jackman. We get this other guy, and he's he just looks kind of he's kind of fat. He's he's got a the I think mutton chops and a big old mustache. I don't know what that hairstyle was called exactly, but and he wears a hat and he keeps his eyes down all the time. Doesn't talk that much. We hear him every once in a while being like mm, and mm, mm, and like whispering to people. He's there in the whole movie. You just kind of, you kind of, it's the kind of, that's what I would call misdirection. He's right there, but the, the camera is not focusing on him at all, and everything keeps happening in front of him that's much more interesting or relevant at the time. And at the end of the movie, they're like, that guy, by the way, that, that guy who's been there the whole fucking time, ever wondered who he is? Well, I think one of the elements that makes it work is because, you know, like Michael Caine's character, you know, his suggestions aren't just because it, I mean, is a suggestion that could be made and it's logical but that because it's a convention within you know illusion yeah circles that's why he says it that's why it's his go-to thing like this is the, the logical explanation is that i mean look at the business we're in it's a thing that happens in this business there you go i think when um they get the like final clue being tesla he's like we can finally find out how he does the trick and michael kane is like i already know how he does the trick and, uh, yeah, it's the obsession stuff. So, yeah, it's just the, the two examples, right? It, there's, there's that thought, and if you have it, people can't call it before it happens. And I think that's kind of that's kind of what's just missing in Ryan Johnson's films. You can't call this shit. It's impossible. It makes no sense. It's just, it's completely and totally out of left field, 100%. Just one simple question. If he didn't speak to Andy and had already killed her, why did he send an invitation box to her in the first place? To appear that he had no reason to think she was dead in any way, I imagine. The, the Probably, best argument. Yeah, the, yeah, the move that you'd make. The, if the cop was like, yo, why'd you send it? He could be like, I, I, I always invite her. I, I don't know. Is she, is she, is like, I had no idea that she was dead. Uh, everyone watched Puss in Boots 2. For real, the movie might be a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? I watched it and I wanted to talk about it. As you might have noticed towards the end of the stream. Well, yeah, we I didn't. I, I don't know if I would. I would. I would recommend that people watch it. I, I would like for more people to go watch that movie. Well, we can we can do coverage of it if you really want to, Frankie. Do that um, for you, just well, for you. Well, the thing that I'm wondering is, uh, well, it's it's always a relevant thing of like, if you two were to watch it, how interested you guys would end up being. Well, I definitely also, want to see it because I've heard I, so many yeah. good things. And also, there's a matter of, uh, I, I've not seen the first Puss in Boots movie. I don't think I've ever watched Shrek 4. Fucking so fake a, fan uh, over I here. I actually haven't seen the Puss in Boots movie, and I don't think I've seen Shrek 4. No, I, I stopped because I watched Shrek 3 and I thought it was shit, so I didn't watch Shrek 4. Shrek the happened. third. Yeah. yeah. Shrek the third, With shit. King Arthur. Oh, wait, what? No, was it, that was the one with Justin Timberlake, right? And King Arthur and Shrek the third. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. I because that was the one where Prince Charming was the bad guy, right? Um and there was like there was Justin Timberlake was like he was this guy who was actually gonna become the king and then like wasn't that <laughs> this is what I mean, it's like such a blur. I don't I don't remember. It's like the Ice Age movie sort of. Like I, I remember one and two I remember 
one and I kind of remember two. And I, know I remember I saw... one a lot. Let me think. Yeah. What, which one was Ice Age 2? The Meltdown. It was the one with the, the lady mammoth. Queen Latifah and... mammoth? Yeah. And then there was, okay, uh, I think I, I sort of remember that. Also, yes, Justin Timberlake yeah. played King Arthur. Oh, the third okay. one had dinosaurs in it. Ice Age yeah. 3 had dinosaurs, didn't it? Also, he wasn't a king at that point, right? He was just Arthur. Arthur no, Pendragon. He became the king at the end. Yay. Right? Because Prince Charming, yeah. Arthur I don't know, P. Like... Bizzle. We gotta do an Ice Age arc at some point, and a Shrek one. Do we have to? Yes. A Shrek one I'm up for, but Ice Age, I don't know. If it's bad. What's with the Ice Age hate? What's that about? Yeah, there is no it. hate. It's Ice Age apathy. I just, I'm not, I, I like the first one. Um, well, there you go. There you go. Well, That's your reason yeah, to start. And uh, to, are we gonna watch all the shorts and the minis and things? Probably not. not. Ones, <laughs> like the like, kind of like the Shrek things, right? They had well, like the Halloween ones and if, stuff. If we did watch Ice Age. We'd have to end with the Scrat Scrat finally getting his little icon. That was that was really illumination. Nice. Yeah, when they were gonna shut down. No, 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 yeah, blue they... sky. Blue sky. That's uh. Blue sky. Know. That's it. Yeah, blue sky. When they were, I think when they were closed, they got yeah. together to give Scrat an ending because it's over for the studio to let him get it. And I feel like it was perfect. He got it. He thought about put it in the ground, but then he decided, you know what? I'm gonna eat it. And the best part is he ate it and he was happy with it. And then went about yeah. his life. It wasn't an he anti move on. Act. It wasn't like, oh, it wasn't as good as I thought it was. It was like, you know what? That was good. I like that. That was good. Go I can carry on. I actually, forward. My story I isn't over. I actually really like that little animation. It's uh, it's great. So, uh, yeah, this maybe, well, this would be like General what? Mills if they were going to shut down. They they finally said that, you know what, the Tricks Rabbit? You can have some tricks. Oh, right, because he's not allowed to have it, is he? Tricks are for kids. Yeah, the word on the street is, at least. Tricks are for kids. That's true. And if it's like a medical thing, like a dog who really wants to eat chocolate or something like that, you just say, listen, look, I know it's really tempting, but like seriously, there's actually What's a medical that? reason why they're not for it. We, we're we're hell bent on stopping you for your own good. It's not just because we're dick kids. We want to we, we want to save your uh, life. We value favorite. you. What is your favorite cereal? Um, it'll probably be something like Honey Bunches of Oats, uh, something that's a bit sweet and that has, like, fruit in it, like strawberries and things. I'm big into those. Um, right. Vanilla, uh, yogurt, that sort of stuff. I really like that in cereal. So I stopped eating cereal. It's, uh, super sugary and everything, and as good as it tastes, it's, it's like candy, that's the problem. A lot of the cereals that I really like are essentially candy surrounded by milk. Um, so... What about uh, you, Mola? Uh, I like cinnamon in my cereal. Right. I also like chocolate, just because chocolate tastes nice. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah, um, that's sure. yeah. I'm I'm asking for a brand, really. That's I think that's what I want to know. I don't never... necessarily have much brand loyalty for cereal. It's the most tastes I'm no... gunning for. Yeah, I have no brand really recognition I'm not, I'm when not it comes to loyalty. It's just like is that you know like cocoa pops or something. That'd work. Yeah, that's chocolate. Cuckoo for yeah. Cocoa Puffs. I, you know, I'm, I, I, I just, I've been distracted by something funny. Um, yeah. Oh, all right. You know the the everything that's being said about the Matrix by Audrey Tate and all that. Uh. <laughs> this meme that's been posted says the Morpheus quote: "I'm trying to free your mind, Andrew, but I can only show you the door." You're the one that has to walk through it. Become a violent misogynist grifter and get yourself arrested for rape and people trafficking. <laughs> like, that's Morpheus telling him how to break the Matrix. <laughs> I think Logan Paul said something about the Matrix the yep. other day. Um, Coming for all of us, guys. <laughs> is it a coincidence that EFAT Mini is colored green and we're talking about this? I don't think so. Uh, oh, yeah, he said, the Matrix is real, pray you never become its target. <laughs> um, that's got 166,000 likes. Okay. Uh, the Matrix, is that, that was after the thing with the pig, right? That that's the thing that he got in trouble for recently. Yeah, you abandoned his pig or something. Yeah. Uh, so really, in cool. a sense, maybe the pig was Neo. <laughs> and he's Agent Smith. Yeah, I think so. The pig actually didn't. He escaped. He escaped the Matrix. 
<laughs> you have that scene where it's like Neo running to find the exit point or whatever, but it's the pig. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bunch of Logan Pauls chasing him down the street. <laughs> ah, the Matrix is one of the most like culturally like that. That film just like continues, you know. Oh yeah, talk about the opposite of Avatar of a cultural footprint, isn't it? Uh, the Matrix has an enormous culture. There's not many films I would say had as much of a cultural footprint as The Matrix, actually. Like in the last, you know, how many years. Mm -hmm. It endures to the point where people wonder, like, wait, was there a fourth one? It's like, there was. <laughs> there was, and none of you watched it. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> well, it's got the same thing. It, we're, we're to a lesser degree, but it has that similar sort of, no, 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 you just don't get it. Like, it's trying to da-da-da, and it's saying da-da-da-da, and I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. Oh, man. That's not gonna, I hope that's not too annoying. I had you guys at half volume in OBS, because of the last time I streamed Gears. This whole time. Uh, uh, well, well, well. Hopefully it's well. not too painful, people at home. I guess we'll see what happens. You just would have been quieter the whole time. <laughs> okay, well, you know. <laughs> they would have still heard you, though. That's uh, nice. Did you know that there's an enemy in Metroid 2 that looks like Samus's helmet slash ship? Did you also know its name is Mumbo? Not a meme, look it up. Oh <laughs> Mumbo. Metroid a Prime Mumbo helmet. Mumbo. God, they're right. An enemy called a Mumbo. What a, a cool enemy. I bet he's super popular and, and a great guy all around. Mumbo. Wait, is this a Constantine script? Dead Twin? Yeah, I remember that. Rachel Weiss. Uh, either of you guys see Constantine the movie? No, uh, I know of it, though. The one with uh, Keanu Reeves, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it. Really uh, we annoys... Were, we were say? talking about uh, the... the, the what, what is it? The Scooby-Doo show? Sans Scooby-Doo earlier? Yeah. Someone sent me this just a moment ago. The plot synopsis for HBO Max's new Velma and oh, it's just Velma oh, animated series starring Mindy Kaling. You could look, that's Velma, guys. Uh, uh, animated series starring Mindy Kaling is certainly something. So At Crystal please. Cove High School, Daphne, Constance Wu, is a popular mean girl orphan who sells drugs because of a dark family secret. Okay. Her boyfriend, Fred, personifies mediocre white richness. Okay. His, his mansion holds a dark secret. And he has a tiny widow private, a subject of much conversation. Shaggy has become Norville, a school newspaper striver friend-zoned by his beloved Velma. He's worried he's a beta male. Remember that lame um, humor concept from 20 years ago? But the Apparently, one that you just that you put in your own story. Well, this this is a this, this synopsis is from an Entertainment Weekly review of the show. So it's just part of an oh, Entertainment okay, Weekly so... review. Oh, it's not like the actual official synopsis. Yeah, it's just the synopsis as being reviewed. And I believe that pretty much all of the descriptions of the characters is probably true because it seems very strong. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and not watch this show. That's uh, my revelation. Uh, really annoys me that we never see Duke's mum react to his death. The one character shown to be close to his parent and the film doesn't even care. Um, oh, right. I mean, the, the the funny thing is, like, I never expected it, because, like, nobody cares about Duke in the film. The film doesn't care about Duke. Right. He's not He's a person. There, away He's the, the one uh, who can die. His corpse is burning. Yeah. Burning there, up. There's no... Nobody gives a shit about Duke. If anything, his death is funny. Um, No context. This plot sounds like if Linda Hamilton died, and literally nobody knows except Leslie Hamilton, and nobody finds out she's Linda's twin in 2022. Also, rip Leslie Hamilton. Um, there's so much that uh, you can't even start talking about. It doesn't make sense because they haven't told us enough. As in, like, wait, do these characters know she has a twin sister or not? And, like, it's actually hard to guess because you have them saying, like, oh, your sister, you had a sister called Helen. And you're like, so you did know? Or you only, like, knew of her one time or something you've completely forgotten for the whole movie? Is that what you're trying to argue? Because, man, like, it's just painful. Because it's difficult to categorize the fuck up when, like, the, the author is so sort of desperate to avoid giving you information. 
Which is a, a strength, by the way, a lot of the time, because you can avoid criticism when you aren't definitive on what the thing is. I said this about a... I think it could have been when we were watching it, right? Like, where, when you have, like, a miracle scientific breakthrough thing, and you're like, it's all based on this this information right here, and you hold up a page, it's like, don't show the audience what's on there. Don't. Uh, let it be a scientific formula, that, that whatever. But when you do show it, like they do in this movie, where they're like, the whole company relies on these fucking, this napkin, and you look at it, you're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, how the hell did a company get built from this? I feel like whatever happened next, like, step two was the much more important step than the fucking napkin. Uh, sharting onion greater than glass onion. Agreed. The popularity of this movie will continue, uh, create a new subgenre. Silly mysteries that don't make sense. I like the first one, but now afraid to rewatch it. It probably has similar plot holes that I did not see the first time. Oh well. Mm, it just might. Hey, if you wanted to see a breakdown of it, there is one on Drinker's channel with a lot of us, and then there's an EFAP episode where we check out praise of the movie. As as Cap brought up, and we talked a little bit about the first one in the coverage of the second one, is that moment, I think, did Das say it was like one of his most hated moments as well, when she says, uh, you did this, and then later on in the movie they play the scene again, and she's like, you did this. <laughs> it's one of the dumbest yeah. parts of the whole fucking film. It's like, oh, he, she was saying Hugh did this. Wow. And his name is Ransom, by the way. His middle name, I believe, is Ransom, and his first name is Hugh, but nobody calls him Hugh. Except, as, as he says in the film at one point, only the help call me Hugh. Uh, and she, she was a maid, I think, and that's why she said Hugh did this, instead of calling him Ransom, which is what everyone calls him. Probably would have been the smarter move. Yeah, I just feel like I'd be really, really specific. I would say, you know, yeah. Adam... McDaniels committed the crime, and I'd specify the crime. Adam McDaniels committed the crime of murder. Mm, you could just say something vague, though. It was the one who walks in the night. Ooh. Yeah, fuck that. Wow, this Ryan Johnson fellow sounds like a horrible writer-director. I hope he never gets a chance at a Star Wars movie. Yeah, he'd fucking ruin it. Or three more. A ton of money. I saw an article saying Ryan builds Legos while editing to keep his hands busy or he'd go insane. <laughs> what? What's he writing with? <laughs> what? Wait, what do you mean while editing? Doesn't he, isn't that going to keep his hands busy? Editing, I mean? I use my hands to edit. I suppose this is why the editing is horrid. I don't know if that's a, that could be a meme reference. Maybe. Like building Legos or something, because it just sounds funny. It's something to say that he's uh, indistinguishable from... You know. What are you going to say? What's wrong with building Legos? No. No? Lego Building Legos is fine. Unless it's Galador. That's kind of cringe. Or oh, building it while you're supposed to be editing a movie. That seems like a bad choice. Yeah, place. that's probably... You should probably focus on, um, you know, doing that. IP law is a little fuzzy. There are stronger claims and weaker claims. There seems to be no ironclad claims, but legal contracts are really strong. Why? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much a good summary of it. It's just that nobody's believing that. Contracts the... are written down, you know, it's on paper, it's in clear English, right? Like, it's it's there, and people make agreements based on those. It's why, yeah, compared to, like, I wrote on a napkin ten years ago, my intellectual property that is the basis on which the business is built, you know? <laughs> like, I don't, yeah, just, I did. It's way murkier. Nobody's believing that shit, that was bizarre, and... The fact that both of them, when building this company together, would have set out on that being, like, a foundation, as in, like, written in contract, that this whole company begins with the napkin, and then they don't write down in the contract who that napkin belongs to or who made it. They were just like, it's well, just the napkin. We, we, we go over a lot of, because, of course, the napkin on its own, like, what is that, really? It's a mind map. And if that got translated in, into anything more comprehensive, it's like, well... That stage like, is more valuable I, than the napkin at that point. Well, of course, right? Like, the napkin is an idea. Like, what is that compared to the actual structure of the business and the products that they create and the supply chain? Um, like, all, all of those types of things are not encompassed by that napkin because the napkin is the beginning of the idea. And then you go to a computer and you start actually, like, writing it out. <laughs> and even once you write it out, you need to build the thing. And again... I, what is the nature of that contract that she signed that apparently got her shut out of the company and lost all of her stock? Yeah. Like, what 
What the hell was that? Di what was in that contract? Yeah, why did they both approve of whatever the hell was in that contract if it could be used? Well, I guess that he way? was cool with it, right? But like, well, but I guess it, remember, decided... it, it could have been used to force him out if they'd all signed oh, it with right, him. Right, right, yeah, that's right. Why I don't would know? Like, agree if, to that if S three created the foundation for a company and it said like it's all dependent on that one, I was about to say recording, but no, it would need to be like the equivalent, like this fucking stick man drawing on paint, and then it's like. Yeah. It, everything is down to that. We and the, to the point where whoever owns it can kick the other two out. Like, why would you yeah, agree to that? I don't know. I just it's just a stupid setup. It relies on an absence of information to work. Come on, guys. We're four and a half hours into your review. Do you recommend this film or not? No. No, but I thought that was apparent by that now. Oh, I by think, this point, I think they're probably joking. Yeah. Well, maybe they are. I don't know. How is this cloud still making movies? Because they're popular. I don't know. <laughs> Just people think they're good. They make a lot of money. Salutations, EFAB crew. Question. How exactly do we as a broken society stop the advancement of this garbage media entertainment? It seems to be getting worse and infecting other things like video games. The most reasonable way to do it is to simply review it and talk about what's not working and hope that I don't know, better ideas prevail. The, there's no, like... There's, there's nothing Changing much... Changing people's to... minds on it. Making the, thing the about mark it is, that you can. We want to have a society where these things can be made. As in, like, there needs to be that freedom. Uh, I wish of course. people wouldn't. <laughs> but, but, like, you know, they're going to keep being made. And to be fair, I think it's a sign of health that we have bad things still being made. It's just that... Man, we have a lot. We're in a pretty bad position right now in terms of overall... We wish we had a more higher frequency of good stuff coming out. Still have good stuff coming out. And that's another thing. Make sure to highlight when the good stuff comes out. Which yep. we will do. Yeah, absolutely. We can. Gotta be praising the good. It's very important that you praise the good. It sets the example for things to be strived for. Because a lot of people like to say that all we do is shit on things. But that's just obviously not true with anyone who engages in our kind of well, content. No, we, only like did two, we only did 20 hours of coverage of Ragnarok. Yeah, and it was, it was about 20 hours for Arcane, if not more than that. And I imagine yeah. we're probably going to do something like that when season Everything two rolls around. around. Uh, and or underwater, underwater, yeah. yeah. And that was that was almost like the closest we got to something where we praise and criticize, you know, as a general sort of approach. Yeah. yeah. Still recommend it though. I would still recommend watching. Uh, watch underwater. I, I think still it's like worth it. it. Yeah. Uh, the bulletproof journal is worse than the prop knife save from the first movie. Um, I never even, like, the prop knife save, if you guys remember, he tries to kill her at the end of the film, he grabs yeah, a knife yeah. from the selection and he accidentally chooses a prop knife. The only question I had was, like, are they all prop knives, or was that the only prop knife? Or I figured they were all prop knives, right? So at that point he's just an idiot. If they're all prop knives, it's better, I guess, than the, the thing. Well, because you have a problem either way. Either he's a dumbo for not knowing that, I guess. Um, or he grabbed the one knife. Yeah, or it's hyper-convenient. Yeah, that she grabbed, the, he grabbed the wrong one. And by the way, uh, that that is set up, quote unquote, near the beginning of the film. He himself mentions something along the lines of uh, how a prop knife and a real knife can be easily mistaken. Uh, therefore, that's what that's the kind of stuff that Ryan does, where it's like, wow, that's awfully convenient. And it's like, well, no, I set it up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the same way that it's like, you know, man, sometimes just guns can fall out of the sky, and at the end, that's what happens and saves your life. So it's like, see, I set it up. And you're like, oh. That's not what that is. You don't understand. Miles had connections to YouTube and Twitch. <laughs> he had the network. You're tearing me apart, Mona Lisa. Yeah. This just says, ah, no, 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 no. Probably in response to the Mona Lisa getting burned. The burning of the Mona Lisa has the same energy as Quentin Reviews dropping Citizen Kane. They mean when he, he dropped it, he, well, he made a video on how me. Citizen Kane was bad at one point. But it was an attempt to parody me. And he eventually got rid of it because uh, his fans didn't understand it all. Yeah. Oh, why does he think you don't like Citizen Kane? No, his point was that I could, what I do with movies, you can do to anything, including uh, Citizen Kane. No, God, no. Because Citizen Kane is really strong, structurally. 
Well, and character wise, you are it's like wrong. Pretty coherent. Incorrect. It's, it's actually a really impressive film, <laughs> considering when it came out. It holds up. It does hold up. Once they said clear leaks hydrogen gas, I knew the house would ignite, but I hoped it'd be smarter and have Miles' idiocy with the lighter igniter. We were talking about this. Wouldn't that make so much more sense to have had it so that he, through his own hubris of clear, destroyed his own everything? Isn't that the obvious payoff? He destroys the Mona Lisa? He ends up causing his own downfall? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... Look, look, I'm sure Hitler liked the Mona Lisa, so it must be destroyed. Nothing Hitler liked should ever remain. Wait, did he like dogs? Hi, Rags. Hello. And yes, he did. There comes a good time man, in that one. He's got a good soul. In all forms of media. Can yeah, the blowing up of the house definitely was a moment where I had to, like, pause in terms of just being like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. She robbed the world of an irreplaceable piece of culture as a culmination of her bratty tantrum after her attempted multiple murder. Yep. The hero, go, ladies girl. and gentlemen. <laughs> you go, girl. It wouldn't even have to be a reporter. The Louvre would want a thorough investigation to find out how their property was destroyed. Yep. Absolutely. Well, of, course, of course, the Greek the government would. are like, man, this massive explosion at this massive villa. Well, I don't um, even know that that would matter at all compared to the loss of the Mona Lisa on their turf, you know? Mm. Imagine the scandal. Like, Mona Lisa burned, destroyed in Greece. You'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, use the time reviewing this movie to watch Miller's Crossing instead, back before Coen Brothers got top billing. Good rat. Also, kids getting introduced to the Beatles via this. Ew. Gross. At least it's uh, a good song. It all makes sense. Ryan got a journal and listened to TED Talks of a director as a child, and thus his career and delusion of grandeur were born. <laughs> yeah. Did TED Talks exist <laughs> back then? <laughs> Fucking whatever. <laughs> The really gloss onion describes the director himself, a simple man that people keep trying to give too much intellectual credit to. Uh, it's kind of the, it's kind of a funny read, isn't it? His movies are a lot more simple than you thought, and obviously but, the positive reading of that is that you can understand the narrative much easier than if you let all of your baggage overcomplicate it. But I'd say the more accurate reading is that you give much more generous praise to the construction of these things when in reality they're kind of a mess. Yeah. Oh my god, I just realized that Duke is just right-wing Hassan down to being a streamer at home with his mum running his life. Uh, yeah, and you're not going to see that being made fun of, right? You'll never see that character. Nope, nope, that will never be a character that you see. Absolutely not. What's the best movie to be named after a Beatles song? Honestly, Help, starring the Beatles themselves, is a fun tism. Lots of crack and culture appropriation going on, but it's fun. Yellow Submarine was a trip. We I don't even know how to start evaluating whether a movie like that is good or not. It's just... That's just, like, weird. I don't hate it, but it's weird. Hmm. And hey, last one. David Suchet as Poirot is best whodunit content. Any episode of that series runs miles around Johnson without hiding behind memes. They had to work to make those things effective. They had to make stories that were complex, detailed, gave away things but didn't give away too much and can be all pieced together. It's not easy to do that. It's tough. It's probably one of the toughest uh, genres to write for. Because it's one that relies, I think Rags said it on the stream, it's like one that relies perhaps the most on internal consistency and like coherence. Like you really can't get away. Well, like, like, can't get away with saying like, oh, it's Space Wizards. No, uh, it's just an unacceptable answer. Um, and I mean, to some extent, right, it's, it's like the implicit agreement of like a whodunit is... You can try and figure it out if you want, and if we've done our job well, you'll be at, you may well be able to figure it out before uh, everything gets revealed. You'll get all the pieces of information you need to figure it out. It, like, it's a genre that can reward you immensely for paying close attention. But if you're watching a movie, and there's one shot where a character doesn't exist, and then the same shot the character exists, it's like, oh... Oh, why am I here? I, there's no point. There's no point in me oh, said, trying to... Waiting for the film to tell you the answer because you're not going to be able to get it. Yeah. You're not real. Yeah, pretty much. 
I think it was like, yeah, it was at that moment. It's like, why am I here? Like, <laughs> to be told at the end, it was really stupid. Oh. Mm. Okay, Thank sure. So much. The story that you wrote was really stupid, yeah. We are in agreement. Mm hmm. And with that, is the end of the Knives Out, Glass Onion, whatever, Super Chat catch up. Uh, thank you all for giving this a listen. And thank you all for the kind donations in general. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate it immensely. Um, I guess since this will come out at some point, you know, thank you and see you on whatever the next thing is that we're doing. Cool. Yeah. All kinds of things ahead. Woo. Hooray. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.